G'day. This is part two of a two-part series. The first part I was talking about my new bigger van on all of the inside of the van. This time I'm going to talk about the external, the features and some of the great things about the bigger van. It's not really a matter of uh, putting on a seatbelt and bracing yourself, but <laughs> let's go. Good morning. Okay, so I'm just going to take you around the outside of the caravan. The reason I'm talking a little bit quiet is the fact that it's uh, just on seven bells and I don't want to wake up the natives, fellow travellers. Okay, so starting from the front here, on the drawbar, we've got the, the hitch, which is the D35. Okay, so the D35, which is on mine, Initially it wasn't. Initially I had a 50mm, but because I wanted to do some off-road travelling, I've swapped the 50mm with the D35, and the D35 means when you go over bumps you can do that kind of movement, whereas with the um, other one it's a bit stiffer and it's less manoeuvrability as it were. Then from there you've got it coming along to the jockey wheel, and the jockey wheel is just a basic one, the very typical of uh, these draw bars. Sometimes you'll have a jockey wheel that folds up alongside the um, alongside the draw bar, which is the one I like. But yeah. the base of the jockey wheel is welded to the draw bar, so I have to wind it up and take it on and off each time, which is a bit of a pain. But hey, what else am I going to do all day? Then moving back from there, we've got our twin nine kilogram gas bottles. Now. I'm really glad I've got the two nines because I use a fair bit of gas. Yeah, I'm using one nine kilogram cylinder per every three weeks because I'm using it on the fridge, which uses a, the majority of it, and a little bit of cooking because I don't tend to do that much cooking. Um, but yeah, one nine kilogram every three weeks. Now, if you've got the other type, the two way fridge, then you won't be using it to cool the fridge and you might want to think about taking it down from a nine kilogram down to four and a half to four and a half kilograms. That will reduce your weight of your um, ball weight on the front of the caravan. So it might be a consideration. Also on the door bar, I've got the luxury of a little tap. Now, that tap's really handy just if you're out doing some work on the van or the car or doing something and you get your hands dirty. You can just, rather than run into the caravan and do all your bits and bobs, you can just grab that, turn on the tap, well, rinse your hands and you're up and away. Then coming up I've got the video camera, the five pin trucky type video uh, cable and that's outstanding. On the old caravan the connection was okay but this is like a serious connection which means it gives me good quality video when I'm driving down the road. So that might be consideration as well. That's what I've got on this. Then I've got the um, I've got the flat seven pin plug that plugs into the car you might when if you on your caravan you may have the round one which is typical from like Queensland and those places they've got the round um, coupling for the trailer and I've got the flat seven pin then you've got the safety chains these are good nice good solid safety chains welded to the draw bar and don't forget if you're wearing, connecting it to the car always have a crossover so you crisscross the one on that side will come across, the one on that side will come across and connect with the D-shackle onto your car. Uh, the last thing on there is the breakaway. So that cable runs from, runs all into the system of the, the caravan and does its thing, but then that has to become come up and connect to the back of the car. Initially when I got the van, it really was extremely dangerous. It was just tied in a knot and connected also with a D shackle. So you should have a separate connection with that breakaway onto the back of the car. So in the event that the chains break and all sorts of things happen, then the breakaway will work and it'll put the brakes on the caravan and 
causes a little less damage and destruction than normal. Let's hope that never happens. As well as that, a little luxury, I've got the, um, oh, I think um, electricians use them, but it's a really big piece of PVC that runs along the, the width of the caravan and you can put your things like your um, fishing rods and all that sorts of bobs. What I might do is I might change the other end because my I've already got some, how do I say, junk in there and I might change the other end so I can screw that on as well and then put some more things like fishing rods and that in the other end. Now we're moving down the, the right hand side, the driver's side or the starboard side. I'm sure you don't use that expression but at least you know the right and the left. So on the, st <laughs> so on the starboard side of the caravan uh, we're coming down here and you'll see that is the dining room window and that the bedroom window. Down here we've got a, um, that's the cover for the hot water service, gas hot water service. And moving down we've got the filler for the water container. Up here we've got the connection for when you're plugging into 240 volts from either a caravan park or a friend's house or somewhere. That's the 240 volt coming in. And that's a, an aerial connection in case you wanted to have your TV outside. Four wheels, two wheels either side on this particular van. As you can see the wheel chocks, I prefer the solid rubber wheel chocks. You also notice I've got the van up on a uh, slight slant. And the reason I've got that is because obviously you need the caravan as flat as possible. And because I've got a shower, when you're using the shower, otherwise you've got pooling on the shower floor and that's a bit of a yucky circumstance. We don't want that. That's the vent for the fridge, the bottom vent. And the top vent is also either for the fridge or the microwave. And notice the checker plate runs the whole length of the caravan. And that uh, not only does it protect it, it also a bit of an indicator that this is an off-road caravan. I'm now on the port side of the caravan. Now this is the side with the uh, awning. The awning on this is a fair bit different to the um, one that was on the little pop top in the sense of the way it comes out and I'll talk about it in, that in another video and uh, the way it comes out. Also what I've done is uh, under here I've installed a clothesline. I had a friend help me install a clothesline. Uh, it's made of stainless steel and I've got a little a couple of hooks on either end. Again I'll talk that at another time. Over here we've got the uh, bedroom window one outside light LED and the dining room or lounge windows. Here we've got uh, a little plug you can plug any 240 like at home you can just plug your uh, extension cord in there and run out 240 power if you've plugged into a 240 volt on the other side. So say the uh, warning is a fair bit different but um, and it has to now really be battened down but it can take a whole lot more wind so that's pretty cool. The movement up and down and around of the TV aerial was discussed in part one of this series. Here I am at the back of the van. Since I've had the van, I've had a friend help me reinstall the wheel. The wheel is now centered in the van and it's also raised. The advantage of being raising is the fact that if we sit down too low, then if I'm doing any off-roading, the wheel could get caught and bust off and cause all sorts of dramas. So now it's hopefully a fair bit safer being sitting up high. The other thing is I bought a jerry can holder, which I'll put exactly where I'm sitting here. That will carry the fuel and I can't put it on the other side because that would cover the number plate. Well, this is the second video of a two-part series. The first part was the tour of the van from the inside. 
and this one was a tour of the van on the outside. Hopefully it helped you. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, I swear, uh, if you think it's worth sharing, please do share it. And until next time, this is Paul Will Drive, signing off.